Hello and uh, welcome to this brief tutorial. I just thought I'd quickly run uh, one off. I've just literally been out an image of the moon and I've not been able to get the moon into the same field of view. This is the closest I've come to it and even that's kind of challenging the outer sort of limb. It's just because that the um, field of view on my camera um, this is a bit small with relation to the telescope. So what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to see if I can merge these together. So I'm just going to minimize that down for a second and open up a canvas. I'm using Photoshop here and that's I've got a kind of a white background it's going to go to black because it's the default that we use in astronomy and I'm going to come into here and I'm just going to drag these across onto here and that's the that's the one I'm going to move that over slightly because that's going to be the end part anyway that, that that's the terminator ending that I'm going to be working from also giving me space for the other moon that I put on please pardon any noise you can hear in the background I'm doing this one as a freebie anyway uh, but I do have my family uh, making a bit of a noise there so please uh, f f forgive the eccentricity right now I've got those two in place now and what I want is the top layer I've just put in to be slightly transparent and the reason for that is because I'm going to be overlapping them and a bit like using a piece of tracing paper I suppose so what I need to do is I'm going to zoom in slightly and pick on a couple of lunar features that I can use to overlap them it looks like something out of a 3D image right now but I mean if I was to sort of go for this area here and then what I can do is I can just very lightly tap it with the cursor and you know when you've got it because suddenly out of the blue it looks like you've just got the <laughs> The image as sharp as you can now on your telescope so there we are I've just aligned it over there and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly come in a little bit further pick on another feature sure it's you know as superimposed it looks that way to me sometimes you can overdo it and and break what you were doing but that looks to me quite good so what I've done is I've just literally married up two features well the same feature on the, on, on different photographs of the same of, of the moon here to, to get it overlap nicely and now what i'm going to do now i'm reasonably happy with that is i'm going to pump it straight back up so there we have it now that looks good but we've still got a, a line here that we don't want so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go across to the eraser tool and i'm going to just gently if i could do that without breaking it just gently erase it's just a nice gentle brush I've come in here and it's a reasonably large, one, large size brush, uh, rubber, sorry, w w with um, hardness of 11%. So it's really quite soft indeed. And just use the square brackets on your keyboard to go up and down. And that's about the right size. But you want it soft because you want to, you want the two to be convincing. You, you want to merge these two, make them look like if you, you took them both at the same the same frame so to speak so I'm just a, that's the only danger you don't want that happening you are merging two pictures so control Z puts that back but don't worry about that because I'm going to basically crop that out so if I come up here to my, what I'm going to do now is I've got that where I want it so I'm going to click on the cursor here and I'm now going to go to layer and merge visible there we are and I'm going to crop because so, I don't want all this out here and I'm going to get rid of and tidy to basically that looks about where you want it so I'm going to just hit enter and that now crops the image now that's great but you know we can do a bit more than that with Photoshop so I'm going to go to image I'm going to go into adjustments and I'm going to go into hue and saturation and I'm going to go to saturation and I'm going to drive that way down looks a bit grey something like out of a hammer movie now uh, all we need is the werewolf but let's continue and if we go into image adjustments then go into curves and I can pull that down the tiny tad and I can make that dark background look black which is pretty much there yeah, you wouldn't have thought I took that at half past six in the evening there we are that's looking a bit better now no right or wrong way of doing this, by the way. It's what your preference is. My goal is to try to get as much detail out of the image as possible and make it nice and authentic. So I'm going to click on OK to that. But I believe if I go to Image Adjustments and then go into Levels, I might be able to have a bit more of a play here. If I pull that over ever so slightly, you don't have to go over too far, you start losing information. We go about there, I think. You cast a reasonably nice shadow across. 
move the middle bar uh, again you you can overkill you can overkill and if you sort of do something you, you wish you hadn't and just go to control Z to put it back and that's not a problem it will put the here we are. Uh, as I say it's just down to personal preference you could uh, I think we're better off over there and that's about right just playing with the the bits and for me that's a reasonable picture of the moon now if I go to image I can also go to auto contrast which I suppose it's kind of done if I'm not so sure control Z undoes it and then of course you can always go to step backwards and so forth and step back forward to sort of switch it on and off but in this way at least you've got to get me out clause and as long as you don't save that as um, over the original image you've always got somewhere to come back to but I'm quite happy with that and all I'm going to do now is go to file and save as and there's some more I've been using and playing around but there's one that I inverted you're going to want to know how to do that now aren't you but <laughs> you can you can obviously name the file what you want to there as a JPEG and if you want to invert it you simply come down to image adjustments and then come down to invert there we go don't like it control Z puts you straight back so I think you get the general gist and you can save that image and you know, upload it to Photoshop let us uh, upload it to the internet sorry let, let us see let us see what it looks like in your online astronomy society group anyhow that's me I'm Alistair Leith and I'm the director of the online astronomy society academy and, and, and the group itself and I'd like to thank you for watching